who about press approached me last year to see if I'd be interested in writing a book on sports betting. This was based on eight years of tipping on the Ian Bre Dempsey Breakfast Show. Uh, we would have uh, done pretty well on the slot. Uh, for charity at Cheltenham, we've made uh, profit seven years of the last nine, for the last five years of the Goway races. Uh, we've made money in more years than we've lost money. So I said, OK, I thought about it, and I said, OK, let's do this. Um, maybe I can write a book that would appeal to sports fans, novices in terms of people who like the odd flutter, and then maybe season punters as well, because I do believe you can kind of supplement your income from sports betting, but you have to adhere to certain principles. Uh, to do so. Certain things like discipline, not showing too much emotion, monitoring your, the money put down because gambling can be quite risky. So these are all the things I wanted to say and also wanted to go into specific sports and events like Cheltenham, the Grand Nationals, um, the golf season in the US and then soccer, rugby, GA and tennis in terms of sports specifically. Ian Dempsey is a broadcasting legend and he's just a great bloke and the fact that he gave me the chance to have a bit of a crack every week with a fiver or a tenner on a bet and uh, we've kept it going for eight years is a testament to him just as much to me. The pressure is pretty big all right and I mean he does get a slagging because you know nowadays with uh, text messaging and emails and tweets and all this business you know you can get immediate response if you don't come up with the goods but to be fair uh, the audience are very good when he wins as well even if it's only on a place where they get some sort of a payback uh, they will always get back in touch and say fair play to you JD and well done John Duggan. Every woman, child, husband, uncle, aunt, they all want to beat the bookies. Every one of them, they want to pay for their next car and they want to buy the new holiday and uh, it's very, very difficult. Uh, we're a little bit worried, yeah, a little bit worried. I mean, he was telling me it's, it's one of the best sellers already. It's in the top ten after just a few days. So uh, coming up to Cheltenham and that, we'd be a little bit worried now that punters will be a bit better informed than they've been in the past. But uh, no, it's, it's, I mean, he's put an awful lot of work into it and it's uh, a lot of the stuff that he said that it makes an awful lot of sense. And he takes his punting very seriously, obviously, and he wants to make money out of it. So, I mean, good luck to him. I hope it sells well and I hope he takes our pants down. What I'll say about the bookmakers is they make their money a certain way. They have yachts in the Bahamas and uh, Sun Hollow days in everybody's mind but they make their money on the thing called the over round which is profit on the way they frame their odds so they will always receive more units than they give that's the first thing but I think people can supplement their incomes I think there are people with compulsive tendencies out there who shouldn't be anywhere near a betting shop or an online account but I will say that I do think you can supplement your income if you have certain principles if you know your stuff if you're disciplined if you monitor how much you put down if you record your bets and treat it as a profit business rather than a winning and losing game a lot of people don't take into account with ground conditions, with pedigrees of horses. You know, there's so much to delve into. Like, for what I could imagine, the professionals on the day, that's the advantage they have over the public. And with the internet and the likes of John putting in this book together, it's, it's obviously it's going to give the public a little bit of an edge. What I say about sports generally is know your stuff. Be a specialist in your sport. Personally, I bet on soccer because I think there's good opportunities. Because you can look at things like form, home and away form, injuries. In golf, I sometimes look at you know, course form and recent form plays a huge um, uh, part in golf because I think golf can be a sport that you can get massive odds on. And then horse racing, I generally try to concentrate on the jumps because I've got a big background in studying jumps for over 15, 20 years and I've assimilated a lot of data along the way. But I don't bet on boxing, I don't bet on the Bundesliga, I don't bet on the national leagues and GAA because I think the bookmaker knows more than I do. They work very hard, so should the punter. I think it's a good sporting book because it's written in a very direct sort of way, in a very personal way. And there's, you know, there are references to uh, music, there's references to where he was, there's references to his mother, there's references to... It's kind of, you feel that it's a, it's a real person rather than this is just the manual to do it. You know, that he kind of personalises it, which is great. The first half of the book is really much about the basics. The mind of the gambler, explaining odds, explaining uh, different types of bets, explaining exchanges, which are a really new thing. And people need to understand them in terms of where you can take a bet or a an outcome is called lane on exchanges and uh, also I under explain horse racing and golf um, in terms of a background because people can be maybe afraid to start betting on a horse racing if they don't know what they're talking about and then I try to that's for the novice and for the season punter I try to go into depth in certain sports like Cheltenham I go through most of the races in the festival going through trends going through historical statistics and then giving some personal anecdotes and a bit of humor to lighten it up a bit but I do go through into specifics when it comes to the golf tour season and my own opinions on tennis rugby and soccer betting. If you follow some of the, the rules and the guidelines that John has in his book, I mean, you, whether you have an edge or not, you've got a perceived edge. And that's really important because you do feel like, you, you feel like you've kind of put the work in and therefore, whether it comes, comes right or comes wrong, because don't forget, if you back a, a two to one shot, it's still most likely it's not going to win. It's only 33% likely to win. So, you know, it, it can go right or wrong for you. But as long as you have the odds in your favour, over time, 
you'll do okay. So I think the perceived edge is very important. So that's what a tip is. That's what, you know, and if somebody else does the hard work, it gives you the tip even better. I've got four predictions for the year. Uh, Cheltenham, I think Hurricane Fly, Willie Mullins, train horse, will win the champion hurdle. He's about nine to two at the moment. So that's next month. Keep an eye on him. Then we've got Paul Casey for the Masters Golf in Augusta in April. Uh, he's a 28 to one shot. He won earlier this year. And he does a form at Augusta. I think if his mentality is right, he's got a big chance at 28 to one. Then there's a couple of bets for later in the year to watch out for. Dublin, the All Ireland football, seven to one. Haven't won it since 1995. But I think they're a coming team, semi final last year. And I think they'll do well in the league. So Dublin are a great price of 7-1. to one. And also one thing I'm always going on about, we all have our little uh, bugbearers and little special bets. All-Ireland Hurling Final hasn't been a draw since 1959 and the law of averages, it has to happen. So I think at 12-1, to one, it'll be about 12-1 to one then. The Hurling Final draw is something to look out for as well.